Fingers crossed, boys and girls. I bet you thought you'd never see me again. Frickin' stuck with me, the fuck? <laughs> So, basically, I wanted to come and talk to you guys. I've been wanting to, but I've been suffering from technical difficulties and basically a early on stage coming of a midlife crisis, so. <laughs> like, get like me, stunned as a habit. Okay, so basically, um, if you don't know who I am, that's okay, you don't need to know. So basically, I wanted to talk to you guys about the concept of faith. Okay, the concept of faith. Now the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I feel like in today's society, we've kind of like distorted the definition of what faith is, and slash don't really necessarily talk about what faith is and what comes about when we have faith in ourselves and in our life and in our journey and in our mind, right? So one of the reasons, again, why I wanted to talk about it is because when I was younger and even up until like last year, I would say, I didn't understand what faith was. You know what I mean? I thought it came down to religion, being religious, you know, going to church, you know, reading external doctrines, and then once you understood or comprehended the story of that, you would then have faith, or, you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't really look into it. Um, I had confidence in myself, or what I believed in was confidence, and um, I didn't really get what faith was. So little did I know, and at least in my personal opinion, I don't think faith has anything to do with religion, how often you go to church, or even necessarily what you read. Um, I think all three of those things and other things can help us discover faith inside of ourselves. But like I said, I feel like the whole definition of faith and what faith is has been just a little bit, I don't know, confused. So. When I was reading my book, he, the author had one definition of what faith was, and so I wanted to see what Google's definition of faith was. And Google's definition is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Which I think is interesting, because I mean, someone could be yourself and something could be your life, but it kind of seems like having faith is like all about external stuff. You know what I mean? It's about doing things to then get it or just like, having it and expressing it. But we don't, I at least was not taught how to have faith or what it is, where to find it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Emery, Mr. Emery John Michael, who wrote Jewels of Light, which is a great book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been talking about her for a while. His definition is an unwavering assurance in the ability of the divine laws. So basically, it's deep certainties that the laws of our universe work. Okay, it's not deep certainty that, you know, how should I put it? I guess it shouldn't be having faith that the universe is going to basically like get back at people. That's not, that's not the universal laws. I feel like nowadays we're so uh, caught up on karma and we have been like, you know, focusing on the law of attraction, but I feel like sometimes, and even myself, I'm waiting for karma to reward me, which I think is not cool. <laughs> so basically, humans don't matter when it comes to faith or the universal laws, okay? It's gonna be there regardless of if a human wants it there, thinks it's there, sees it's there, or doesn't even believe in it at all, okay? The universe doesn't tend to a certain person or a certain personality or a certain gender or a certain race or a certain social class. It doesn't. It may seem like that, but that's when we get a distorted version or view on how the world works and how like the, the universal laws work, you know? Forget society's laws because I feel like society's laws are just ever conforming and freaking just that exactly. It's with or without human belief, okay? So faith, 
regardless of if you believe in it or not, which is something I didn't even believe in, doesn't mean that it didn't work. And what was interesting is I used to see a lot of people walking around who I, you know, assumed had a lot of faith or seems like they carried themselves with so much faith and I didn't get it. I almost wondered how were they so happy and confident in the world when the world is such like a kind of shitty place, you know what I mean? I just didn't get it. What I think is so important when it comes to having faith in something is focusing on our actions, not our possession or position, okay? So it doesn't matter where we're going. It doesn't matter what we have or what we're going to achieve. We need to focus on the actions that we're taking. And something else that I think is really important is making sure that those actions aren't hurting the well-being of others at all. You know what I mean? So when we have faith in our choices, our actions, and ourselves, money, prestige, or power does not corrupt it or yourself. So what does that mean? It's basically saying that when you have faith in your choices, in yourself, in your mindset, how much money you have, your social class, whether you're smart, you're not as smart as the next person, you know, or how much power you have. Either you're a principal, you're the president, you're the uh, lead singer of a band, right? If you have faith in yourself, those things, it doesn't, it doesn't affect you. Yeah, sometimes I feel like, actually right now I'm having like a mini epiphany. I feel like the focus is overloaded on confidence. And I think that the confidence that's being showed about on social media and in everyday life is almost like, it's like becoming too much, you know what I mean? I don't know if like you kind of get what I mean or if we're on the same page, I hope we are. But in my opinion right now, I almost think it's better to start having more faith in yourself and then confidence will naturally happen. So I'll kind of explain that in a second. But those who doubt the universal laws and abilities start losing certainty over themselves. I personally have that happen to myself still today. When I start having an uh, uncertainty with anything, how life is going, my future is going to go, how my YouTube channel is going to go, I start doubting everything. And I literally start just completely losing faith in myself, you know. And I think that's definitely because I'm not having trust in the universe and just letting it letting it do itself. It's almost like I'm sitting here waiting. And that's that's a really important thing that I want to talk about. What I think is also so amazing about learning how to gain faith in yourself is that you don't have to be scared of anything. You know, and that's kind of silly to say. And it's even more interesting for me to say after going through some really crazy stuff because there's certain parts of my life where somebody's like, dude, just have faith in yourself. The universe is going to do its thing. I would have probably either punched them in the face or just started cracking up. And they're like, dude, you, do, do you know? Like, are we on the same wave? Like, what is faith going to do for me or trust in this universe? Like, I promise. It sounds crazy. And some of us, it seriously takes personal experience to get anything. We can hear the same message over and over and over again, but if we're not ready, it's not going to resonate with us. It's, it's literally not. It's like throwing salt and pepper and seasoning on the cement versus a steak. A steak is ready to just marinate. It's ready to soak. The cement isn't. You get, you get what I'm throwing? Yeah. So anyway, I, there's a little thing called the law of affinity. And Emery talks about it in the book. And basically what it is, is it's when you personally set into motion certain currents by the quality of your inner life, okay? In return, you produce an effect from the universe. I even have this little quote written in my bathroom that kind of says, like, when, when you focus on something hard enough, it's going to enlarge, not in size, but in power. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, the law of attraction, ask, believe, receive, but the hard work kind of needs to come in. It's, it's sort of like that, but it's basically when you, when you put in positive energy and action and effort, the universe is going to do its own thing to cater to what you need in your path, okay? So that's not saying that all of a sudden if you work really hard, the universe is just going to throw a million dollars at you because that's what you need. Yeah, that's what you need, but that's not that's not what you need. Do you get what I mean? Maybe that's what somebody else needs on their journey or their path, or say somebody got accepted right away into a really nice college. That's what is on their path. 
So if we sit here and we wish and want what they want, the universe is kind of going to get confused. And in my opinion, it's going to kind of put your like magic on hold. You know what I mean? Your ability to produce what you want in your life because you're not focused on your life. You're focused on what other people are gaining in their life, hoping you'll get it in yours. And that, that doesn't really make sense because they're on a completely different path, right? So once we understand that we're on a unique individual path where we need to focus on positive actions for what we need, you know, not what they need, not what she needs, not what her boyfriend needs, but what we need, you know? The universe is going to kind of see that, you know, you're setting into the, you're setting waves into motion and the current is like, you know, the waves go out, the waves come in. If the positive energy and actions go out, po the, it's just going to come back. And what's crazy is it's almost going to seem like magic. And I know I just used that word that we have magic in us, but it's more so just our ability to control our thoughts, our actions in our life. You know, when we finally grab a hold of that, it seems like miracles are happening. But you know what, low-key in reality, it's just like, I, I don't know how to explain it. I know, there, I know there's such thing as miracles, but I don't know. Maybe that's another topic for another video because this is more like I want to stick to my notes and that's like a thought to ponder. And it, yeah, we'll talk about that on another day. It's not what we deserve, but what we have been showing through action, thoughts, emotions, and responses. Okay, so just because you think you deserve something, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right. It's what we've been showing. What we do every day matters more than what we do every so often. I love that quote so freaking much. You know, you can give to a charity once and then be selfish and just weird mindsetted, you know, for the rest of your life. It, it doesn't matter that you did that once necessarily. It's what you do every single day. Be genuine with yourself and the, the universe will be genuine with you back. It's not going to give you everything you want and need, but it's going to give you the little things to help you on your journey. You know, this is a journey of ourself. The universe doesn't need to be taking this journey for us. You catch what I mean? Any slash all life experiences, you should kind of also think of it this way. You're going to be a little bit worn, but you're going to be a lot wiser. So you may be wondering, um, what are some ways of producing faith? You know, there's a lot of negative ways. And I think society influences negative ways, just like negative ways to have confidence, like false confidence or false body positivity. There's just really weird things happening online that I've been seeing recently, if you catch what I'm throwing. Um, but basically, I have three steps, and the Jewels of Light also explain these. But uh, the three steps in my words are developing an attitude inside of your mind that literally propels you forward, okay? It propels you to achieve your goals. It, you, oh my gosh. Give yourself the mindset and the attitude that throws you so hard at your goals that you do everything in your power to achieve them, okay? That doesn't mean, again, you cheat your way through. It's not buying your way through. It's not faking it until you make it, okay? It's none of that. It's developing an attitude inside of your head that fights the resistance, that fights the comparison, you know, that fights conforming. Two, do all we can knowing that the universe will aid us. So do everything we can. We don't wait. We don't have somebody care to us. We don't expect. We don't just hope. We do everything we freaking can, dude. Everything. Whether that means we stay up late. Whether that means... We spend some time by ourselves. whether that means you travel the world, okay? Do everything in your power to achieve your goals and the universe will aid you, even if it's a little bit at a time, even if it's finding a book you need to read. That will probably be more than a million dollars will ever be. You know, some things are priceless. Number three, consistent positive efforts. Inner certainties that the laws of life always work. Humans can be sick and nasty beings. Humans can make sick and nasty choices. That does not make the universe nasty, and that does not make the way the universe works nasty. Okay? Do not confuse, you know, somebody else's choices on how life works. Okay? That's how their life works. That's how their life chose to go. Not ours. And that's not how your life needs to go. And that's not how you need to push the world. We all have a huge influence. 
We have influence on ourselves, on our family, on our friends, on our class, on our coworkers, on people we meet at the store. We have a huge influence. If we have faith in ourselves, imagine when other people see that. Just like I said, I used to see people and look at them and envy them. And be like, how the heck are you? How, what the what? Where do I need to go? What do I need to inject myself with? I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Oh my God, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I also think of it this way. You don't just get an A on a test. Yeah, there's those certain kids who are just like so freaking smart. We're not talking about that. If you study, 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 what's going to come about? What you do every day matters more than what you do once in a while. You can't just sit down every Friday, read a chapter, and think you're going to memorize it. You need to take time. You need to practice, okay? Act with assurance, okay? Do not worry about what the outcome even is, what the outcome is going to be, what somebody else's outcome is in comparison to yours. Act with assurance in yourself, in your mind, in your actions. Have optimism. We can't be pessimistic people spreading pessimistic messages in a pessimistic world. It don't work like that. I'm sorry. Faith grows with exercise. You're not going to get... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I had to do that. Don't break your neck. Um, you don't just get muscles by just having it. You know, it's, it takes hard work. You don't just, you know... If I had a million dollars... Here's a good, here's a good thing. Basically, we want faith to be what runs our subconscious. We have a conscious mind that's aware of freaking everything, right? It's always taking notes, reading, jotting, plotting, whatever, right? But then there's our subconscious that is literally just like a blank roll of tape that is tracking down everything, regardless of if we think we're going to remember it, want to remember it, need to remember it. It's trapped, whether we have access to it. It's in our subconscious. It's in our being. Just because it's not on our frontal lobe, it's still there, okay? When we practice exercises of having faith, having a positive mindset, positive attitude, working so hard towards everything that we have, you influence your subconscious because of repetition, just like muscle memory. Remember, power of a cell. So think of it that way. Our subconscious is basically the power of a cell. We have no idea how to control the things inside of us. We don't really know how that stuff works or how to keep our heart beating, but it does because our subconscious is in control of our body, right? Everything. People are like, well, girl, it's not like that. Just hear me out. Just listen. So once we have faith instilled in that same working system, it's going to become second nature, you know, like riding a bike. <laughs> um, so when your conscious mind is weak, your subconscious is going to be weak, okay? You're going to be weak. It's not just little things. You, we can't just, like, fix one little square and disregard all the rest. Establish authority in your life, you guys. That's literally the only thing we kind of have control over, right? We can't control others. We can't control the thoughts, the wants, the needs of others. We can't control what others do around us. But we can have authority over our life. If we don't have authority over our life, and if say our parents do or our teacher does, or our significant other does. Get authority of your life, yo. I promise the grass is much greener. So think of your subconscious as a basement or an attic, okay? You just, it, it, you forget about it almost. Everything is stored down there. It, it, it might be cluttered as hell, but what happens the day you finally go down or the, finally go to that one room and you clean it up? It allows things to start flowing a little bit smoother. It allows yourself to start getting new habits, new thought patterns. You know what I mean? You change your habits by changing your thoughts. You know, because it ultimately it's our thoughts that control our emotions and our desires. And it's our thoughts and our emotions and desires, obviously, that allow us to make the action that we think is needed, whether that be good or bad, it starts in our thoughts, right? Habits and thoughts are so important. Maybe we, I can make a video on that in itself because that's kind of cool. But repeated action is a habit, okay? And when habits crystallize, 
that becomes your character, okay? And get this, your character becomes basically the source of your destiny, the source of what's, what's to happen, okay? So simple. Repeated actions become habits. When habits become so solid that it becomes you, your character, then your character and how you go about this life, how you think, how you act, how you portray yourself, that controls basically your destiny. What comes to you, what doesn't come to you, what you do, what you don't do. It even controls how other people view you. So if your actions are always positive, hardworking, they're always towards something that is for the better. Of others too, not just yourself. Imagine how your character is going to build. And then when your character is nothing but a ball of positive actions, that's going to be the light that you want to be around, right? So the universe will do its job if we do ours, okay? It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And have faith in that notion. So it does. It seems like it's almost magic. It, life becomes magical when you have certainty in yourself. In, in your actions, when your intentions are not harmful. You can't have harmful thoughts and think that you're gonna have a positive way of thinking. The power of a seed, Joe, if we want to, we can just rip up our whole garden and plant something new. It's never too late. And the best thing is, is every day, we have the chance to do that. Plan something new. If you have to sit here and ask yourself, what, what, who are you, what's your character like? And if you don't know who you are, but you know you just have negative thoughts that tear yourself down, that is such a good realization. That's the start. That's the complete starting point. If you have bad habits on social media, do something about it. And then, heck, if it takes two years for you to get back on it because you finally have faith in yourself, your practice, and why you're going on it or what you want to achieve on it, so be it. Take that break. Take that time. Like, I literally have not been on YouTube because I have not had faith in myself, in my practice, in my work, in what I do, in my ability to influence others, even that I influence others at all. And I was like, you know what, dude? Like, it took breakdowns. It took mental freaking breakdowns, tears. It took a lot. But sometimes it, you have to do that because, like the fella said, <laughs> emotions are meant to be felt, just like pain is. So I promise you it's okay to change your way of thinking, your habits, who you hang out with. It's okay to detoxify yourself in multiple aspects. You don't have to do one certain thing to get faith, you know? And don't believe that faith is only uh, special according to certain people. Certain people don't just get it, you know what I mean? The universe doesn't just tend to specific people. If we think that way, what the hell? It, it's like having a best friend and you just talk shit to them all the time. So the best friend's gonna be like, dude, I'm, I'm trying to help you, so I'm just gonna sit and stop. That's kind of what the universe is doing. The universe wants to be there for you. But if you're not there for yourself, the, it's like literally you're closing the screen door. You can still see through it, but you really think the universe is going to push its way through a small pinhole just to aid to you? And you don't have to push yourself through a small pinhole just to have or expect the universe to give back. Just work hard. Work smart. Work wise. Take care of yourself. Have faith. And I really hope I kind of didn't just talk out my ass and that you kind of understood what I was getting at when it comes to faith. If not, I can, I can scratch this one and try it again. Because I'm back. I'm tired of this bullshit. Have faith. A calipator doesn't have to work its ass off to become a butterfly. The universe does its job when it needs to do it, okay? We're gonna crystallize into a butterfly, but only if you allow yourself to. I guarantee you if a calipator buried itself in mud, what would happen? 
To be written in the books. A calipita won't turn into a butterfly burying itself in the mud. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Alright, kids. I'm not you.